Hi, I'm Franklin Terbeck. Everyone calls me Lynn, and you should too. I'm here to tell you about CS111, Introduction to Programming and Problem Solving. This semester, for the first time, we're experimenting with some video lectures and screencasts, and we're doing this for, the, for three reasons. The first reason is that this semester, class begins on a lab day as opposed to a lecture day, and there's some material that we normally would teach in a lecture before the lab that we want you to see. Secondly, uh, we want to have some times where we introduce material through um, video lectures and screencasts to open up some time during lecture so we can have more hands-on activity during that time. And third, uh, this Thursday, uh, January 26th, I'm going to be away at a conference, and Stella Kakavuli has kindly agreed to teach my lecture during that time, but I wanted to be involved in the first week of teaching, and the only way I could do so was via these video lectures and screencasts. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the course, but first I want to make sure that everyone has an uh, account on the CS department server before tomorrow. So the way you create such an account, if you haven't done so already, is you open up a web browser and you go to cs.wellesley.edu tilde cs111, which brings you to the cs111 um, homepage, which is uh, uh, where you'll be going for all CS111 information this semester. Okay, let's go to the course schedule. And then uh, on Tuesday, January 24th, let's go to problem set zero. And the first task is creating an account. Uh, and if you click on the link here, uh, it'll bring you to a, an account request form that you can fill out. Uh, and at the bottom of the form, when you filled out all the information, uh, type in the magic word, which is Shrek. Uh, and then when you're done, you submit the account request. And this will create an account that you can use uh, in lab on Wednesday, January 25th. Uh, if possible, we'd like you to do this by 4 p.m. on January 24th. Uh, and if not, it's not a huge deal. Do it as soon as you can. But uh, you might not have an account by the 25th in lab. And if that's the case, you might have to work with someone else or use a guest account. But we'll figure out something in lab. Um, okay. Next, I'd like to tell you about the course. Um, and if we go back here to the schedule page, uh, we'll note that there are some notes here. Uh, these are some slides that I will be going over during this screencast. And if you want to, you can uh, follow along with the slides on your computer. So I'm going to open up PowerPoint now and start going over these slides. Okay. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that you are in the right class. We have several introductory computer science classes, and, um, and they do different things. So um, what is CS111 for? CS111 is uh, an introduction to programming and problem solving. And in this class, we do a lot of programming. And this class is the introduction to the computer science major. Uh, if you're planning to take more courses in computer science, this is the right course for you. Um, but about half the people who take this course do not go on to take other courses, and that's perfectly fine. Um, the follow-on course to this course is CS230 Data Structures, so that would be the natural second course to take after this one. And if you have a lot of programming uh, experience, you might want to consider taking that course first. Uh, rather than this course, and if so, you should contact uh, Brian Jaden and, and ask him about that, if that's an appropriate thing to do. Um, there are other two other intro computer science courses being taught this semester. One is CS110, Computer Science and the Internet. Um, and in this course, you also do some programming and problem solving, but more as an appetizer as opposed to a full course. CS111 is the full course on programming. Uh, in CS110, you uh, work in pairs to uh, create a, a website for a client who wants one, uh, and you learn a lot of other things about computer science along the way. Another course being taught this semester that's an introductory computer science course is Computation for the Sciences, CS112. Uh, and this is a great course to take um, if you uh, are majoring in the sciences or economics. Uh, you think you might need to uh, make some programs to collect and analyze data or maybe run some simulations. Uh, this course uses MATLAB. Um, there are two other introductory computer science courses that are not being taught this semester. One is the Sociotechno Web, which talks about computers in the context of things like 
social networking and trust of information and e-commerce and so on. Uh, next time that will be taught is next fall, 2012. And uh, CS117, Inventing Mobile Apps, is an intro course uh, in which we teach programming in the context of creating Android apps. Uh, using a system called App Inventor. We taught it for the first time last fall, and we're not sure when it's going to be taught again. It will be taught again in the future, but we're not quite sure where. If you want to learn more about these courses, you should go to the um, CS web pages, uh, and there's a section here on registration, um, and you can read the information there. There are links to other courses and information about them, so you can determine uh, if you're really in the right course. We want to make sure that this is the right course for you, and if it's not, you should choose one of the other courses. Okay, let's assume this is the right course for you. Um, then what's next? Well, you're going to be meeting with us three times a week. There are two lecture sections, and both of them will be taught in room Science Center 257. Now that's a change for lecture section one. That was uh, scheduled to be taught in a different room, but it has been moved to Science Center 257. So. Um, you should be sure to go there for your first lecture. Um, every Wednesday, there will be a two-hour lab, and there are four lab sections. Um, three of them are taught by Stella Kakabuli in room 257, and the fourth is taught by Jean Herbst, and that's in room uh, E101. And you should be sure uh, this week on Wednesday, January 25th, uh, to attend the first class, which will be a lab, and it will be very important to attend that class. Uh, if for some reason you can't get into um, the lab section you want, your schedule has changed, or so on, you should go to the uh, Google group, um, and that's a place where we post information about the course, and you can post a uh, message there about, say, switching labs. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, uh, you'll learn how to do that in tomorrow's lab. Uh, so sh do show up at the lab that you can actually attend tomorrow. And we can worry about swapping later. Uh, it's worth noting that the uh, CS111 lab is not like a, a chemistry or biology lab. There are no experiments that you're performing. There's no lab reports that you are submitting. Uh, it's not a separately graded part of the course. These labs are times during which you get some hands-on experience writing some programs and you get some help from the instructor and some teaching assistants uh, to make sure that you are uh, understanding the course material. So it's basically extra time to do hands-on work. Uh, and for that reason, it does not satisfy the Wellesley Laboratory requirement. Uh, it turns out there is no required textbook for this course. Um, most of the material will be taught via slides, and uh, the slides, as we've noted before, are available from the um, CS111 homepage, you go to the course schedule, and you click on the particular day to get the slides. Um, and most information will be conveyed in that way. Um, there's a lot of other information on the CS111 uh, homepage. Um, there's a course information section here, a page that you should take a look at. There's an overview of the course. Uh, there's a listing of the instructors, me and Jean and Stella, and when our office hours are. Um, soon we'll post a um, list of the teaching assistant drop-in hours, which will be typically the two nights before an assignment is due. We have seven teaching assistants this semester. Uh, we're very happy with that. Um, and um, there's more information here. For instance, it turns out that we have a lot of... Uh, Java books around that could help you, and these are available in various places. Uh, we describe grading here. Um, you have weekly problem sets in this course that account for 40% of your grade. There will be a first midterm in class um, that counts for 15% of the grade. There will be a second take-home midterm that counts for 25% of your grade, and there will be a self-scheduled final exam that will count for 20% of your grade. Uh, and if you look on the course schedule, you'll see when those things are. Um, there are weekly homework assignments, uh, and these will typically be due on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. There's uh, twice during the semester when things are due on a Friday. 
Uh, and typically, we do not accept late assignments, so just turn in whatever you have done by the, uh, the due time. If there's some extenuating circumstance, uh, you can ask for an extension uh, in advance, but we won't necessarily always, always grant one. Okay, there's more information here um, that, uh, that you should read through. Okay, um, there is an optional textbook, and we have some readings from this textbook that are posted on a, uh, an e-reserve collection that's available uh, via Google Documents. Um, if you go to your Google Documents and select the area called Collections Shared With Me, you will, uh, you will find that information. Uh, and uh, you'll go over that in lab on Wednesday. Uh, and as I've noted before, there's uh, many Java programming books that are available in these spots. Um, there's lots and lots of help that you can get in this course. There's a very big support structure. Uh, as we mentioned before, there's this Google group. Uh, if you have questions, you can post them to the Google group and they will be answered fairly quickly by an instructor or a teaching assistant. Um, we all have um, lectures, lab instructors, and TAs all have office hours or drop-in hours that are posted, um, and we uh, encourage you to come by to those. Um, and we want you to, uh, we want to get to know you this semester, so even if you don't have a question, we'd like you to drop by just to say hello. And to encourage you to do this uh, during the first three problem sets, um, we actually require that you collect a sticker from each one of the instructors, each one of the three instructors during the first three assignments. And uh, that forces you to, to come meet us. Um, and so please come visit us during office hours so, so we get to know you. Uh, and it turns out that uh, if you're having some trouble in the course and the drop-in hours and office hours aren't enough for you, you can request an individual one-on-one -on -one tutor from the Learning and Teaching Center uh, and uh, it's a great deal. There's uh, no cost, no stigma attached, um, and it's a really wonderful thing to do. Um, now, it turns out that in addition to learning from us, you're going to learn a lot from each other. Uh, and as a general rule, um, we want you to work with each other uh, on assignments. But um, the kind of work that you can do with each other is limited. So here, here are the ground rules on that. Um, you can always talk to one another uh, about questions on assignments uh, in non-programming language. So you can use high-level languages like drawings. You can talk to each other in English. The thing that you are not allowed to do in this course is to share code. So one person is not allowed to write up some code in Java and then just uh, give that piece of code to someone else. That is not allowed, and we consider that to be a violation of the honor code. Um, there is one exception to this rule, which is that there's a few times this semester where we're going to ask people to do pair programming, where a pair of people will write a single program together. And in that case, of course, the people who are working together can share code, but not with anyone else. Um, the other rule we have is that there's an awful lot of materials that people have from previous semesters of the course, and um, it is verboten for anyone to access any of those previous materials. We consider that to be a, a violation of the honor code, and that's a, a fairly serious thing. Uh, so the general rule, again, uh, talk to each other, but not in Java. Talk in English and drawings. Um, and if you have any questions about what is allowed and not allowed, um, just, just talk to the instructors and, and we'll let you know. Okay, that's it for the uh, first portion of this screencast. Uh, and the next portion of the screencast, we'll talk to you about what computer science is.